So I've been using this Kindle Scribe for a little over a year now since it came out. And I think they've improved a lot of the software features with a lot of different aspects from the note taking to the book reading. I'm gonna talk a little bit about those. I'm also going to discuss some of the comparisons in the market. So like the Remarkable 2 that I've been using for a bunch of years now, I had the Remarkable 1 before that and also my Kobo e-reader and how I kind of simultaneously use these devices. Maybe it'll give you an informed decision of what uh, you might be looking for in an e-ink paper tablet. I also did a long interview with one of my friends, Olivia, who has owned this for about six months. And we talk a lot about the remarkable experience about this and she's been using it for work specifically. So we're gonna kind of talk about different use cases. Like she uses it differently than I do. So I'll insert relevant parts of that interview in this video so you can kind of get a different perspective as well, besides my own. I will also post that full kind of talk slash interview. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is the software of this device. When the Kindle Scribe first came out, its note-taking abilities were pretty basic from a remarkable comparison standpoint. And that's something that over the past year, I've seen a lot of improvements. It's come a long way since then, which is great to see. One of the things I'd like to see from the Remarkable implemented in the software is actually the double tap and triple tap function with three fingers or two fingers. And that quickly allows you to go back one step or one stroke and three fingers allows you to go forward. That is something that in the Kindle they don't have. And while you can still like erase things, it requires the flip of a pencil or you have to hit the undo arrow, which just feels less intuitive than when I'm writing just to tap and then keep writing. So. That's something I think they could improve in the notebook software. I'd also love to see a drawing app on this. That's something that really none of these devices have so far. There's actually a product called the Supernote A5X2 that's releasing this month slash next month. I'll be getting one of those from Supernote and that has a dedicated drawing app. So I'll be doing a live stream of that if you're interested. But Remarkable and the Kindle, I think that's something that they could really implement that would bring a new user base for drawing that they currently don't have. I do like the ability in the software to auto rotate. So depending on what I'm doing, I can flip it and it'll kind of adjust um, immediately. That is something Remarkable doesn't have. And it's just nice, especially because this is an e-reader and you always want it to kind of be facing what uh, direction you're using. In the note-taking app, when you flip it, it won't go sideways, it'll just go up or down. But when you do books, I'll talk about a little landscape feature when I talk about books more, which is a new feature they added that uh, I think is really cool. It is really nice that in the writing portion of it, you can control where you have the bar. So you could have it on this side or you could have it over here if you're a lefty and you don't want that getting in the way of your writing experience. And that's uh, something that the Remarkable didn't have. They added that recently. So good to see here for all of you lefties. One of the really nice features of the Kindle is the quickness of the pinch to zoom. It goes immediately and it gives you a lot of size options. So because this is a bigger screen, people that might be a little more hard on the vision can actually quickly resize it and it works super well. My Kobo, for example, you can do it, but it you know, takes a sec to do it. This is just kind of instantaneous. One big thing about the books is that you are not able to live annotate on most books. They have certain specific formats that they've optimized for Kindle kind of scribe stuff, and you are allowed to use those, but it's really limited in the options. And that's something that I think it's because of the resize feature that they didn't add that. Because imagine if you wrote some text over this and then you resize it, like the text that you write will not be perfect with it, right? So, I mean, that's something I think that when you like start a book, they should probably just give you the option to lock the specific size you want, and then it could be editable. In its current form though, you cannot do that. What you can do is you can have little annotated notes that will come up though. One of the reasons that this device can go on sale a lot is that Amazon is probably losing money on some of the devices because they know you're gonna buy books and that's really the outlet for them to push this medium, right? So. That's why you'll see it on big discounts. The things like the Remarkable, you'll see very small sales or Supernote or the books products, but nothing as crazy as Amazon can do because they're a much larger company and this is a way for them to push books so they can make money on that and subsidize the cost of the hardware. So like I was talking earlier, how you can kind of read books split. 
There are some books like this book where if I go into the layout option here, I cannot click the kind of double view or the column view. But if I go back and then let's say I go to this book, it does support it. So I can, you can see I can flip and I can see two pages at a time, which for a book like this, that it's a instructional on a camera, it's nice to like still see that image and then see what it's talking about. And that's a cool feature they added, I think a couple months ago. Great to see that and uh, love that feature. It makes it more of like a book style where you're reading two and two like that instead of holding it vertically and having just one big page. The ability to annotate stuff and mark kind of little pages is nice. And you can also use the feature to actually have like kind of like a sticky note that pops up to write on that book and it'll save it for that page, for example. So that's nice, but you cannot annotate right on the actual text. Because this is a heavy like Kindle bookstore experience, I'd really like to see a feature where right now in the settings, if I want to adjust the brightness, I have to tap there, bring the menu up, adjust the setting, then tap back out of it to get back into the page. Now something the Kobo does that's pretty cool is it has a slider. So you can see it's off right now. And when I slide it up, it'll increase the brightness and decrease the brightness, you see? So that's a gesture thing that I think they could implement in the software. I was testing it out the other day and it doesn't really do anything. So that's something very easy to push. And I think it would just clean up the lighting experience. Although I will say the auto brightness is generally pretty good. But having that quick fine tune control is a nice feature that I would like to see in here. Now in terms of the pen, I have the pen that has the eraser, which is more expensive. The base pen, I would say, is good enough if you uh, kind of use this just more for reading. But this is an absolute must if you're note taking, in my opinion, with the eraser. Um, you can also set the button here to different functions. And uh, so when you hold it and you press down, then it'll do that function. So like mine set to the highlighter because I have an eraser. The feel of the Remarkable pen and the Scribe pen, because they have these nibs that you replace every couple months, they do have a very kind of scratchy, if you hear that, I'll get close so you can hear it. The eraser is good. It's really quick and um, kind of responsive, but they should really work on the texture here. It's a very smooth plastic, so that does not feel uh, nice at all when you're erasing. The Remarkable pen has kind of more of like a rubbery feel, so it has just a smoother feel like an actual eraser. Did you, did you see the eraser feel no. on this? Try the eraser feel on that. I think it's a little better. Oh my God. Way better. Yeah. Okay, they way Cause better. Because feel, feel the end of it, <gasps> like the texture. Oh, see, this is This is, is nice. like a hard plastic. No, this that is That has nice. like an actual eraser feel. See, they did the texture thing with this. That, I would, I like erasing with this. You get yeah. a satisfaction of like erasing. That yeah. is shitty. Yeah. I'd also like to see two buttons at some point or gesture controls for the button where you can have a difference between a press, uh, a quick press or like a long press or maybe a double tap, something like kind of like your uh, AirPods or your Buds. I'd also like to see different pen designs, like more ergonomic ones, but that's another story. You can use any Wacom EMR, that's the technology that these pens use, and they have a lot of pressure sensitivity. So when I'm on the pencil tool, for example, I'll go right here. And you can see like with minor shading, I can go from very, very light gradation to like much darker here. You see that? So it feels very intuitive like an actual pencil. I collabed with a video on The Remarkable with a guy called Brandon Boswell. He has a YouTube channel as well. So I'll, I'll link it below for you. But he put me onto these um, little Wacom nibs that you can replace that are metal. And so that makes it feel more like a ballpoint pen I'll put links to those if you guys are interested on the ones I bought. But I do like having the option of if I wanted to like sketch on here, then I can have the regular nib that feels more like a pencil. But then if I'm writing, I can switch to the metallic tip and it's more of a ballpoint pen experience. Just really quickly to talk about pricing. I saw these on Black Friday at about 240 or 250, I think. So that's like an absolute steal for one of these. Uh, I bought mine full price when it came out, so it was 414 with the premium pen. You can save some money if you get the basic pen. And then obviously if you get a folio, you can also get aftermarket folios. I'll put some links to some cool ones down in the description there. And I'll also put a link to this so you can check the most updated prices. 
on the holiday season now, it's gonna definitely go on sale. The links below are all affiliate links. It costs you nothing, but helps kick back to the channel. Getting into the screen of the Kindle, this is a 300 PPI screen, which is 300 pixels per inch. So it's the kind of density and resolution of the screen. Amazon has actually had an exclusive on this screen for the past year. I believe it opened up last week or a week and a half ago. So we'll probably end up seeing this screen on new devices, but the nice thing here is, you know, you get it here. So it's a very high resolution screen, which is nice. You'll get that crispness and that sharpness that you would associate with a higher resolution screen. The front light is actually really nice. You can see I have it at maximum brightness here. So it's really kind of, you know, popping in terms of the, the brightness. Do you see how the Kindle screen looks more lifted? Yes. That is because- it looks deep set, yeah. It, the, you see, and you see the remarkable screen? If I can actually work this thing. Um, it looks like it's almost like on the, yes. the top layer. Yes. And it's, it's because of that little gap there. But so that is because it has a front light. Okay. So these aren't backlights like your traditional LCD screen yeah. or TV. They're front lights. I know two Kindle Scribe owners that I've showed it to and they were like, oh yeah, like that's interesting, but I didn't really notice it. So your mileage may vary, but just FYI on that. For reading, that's a feature they obviously had to have because that's the main purpose of this. It's like a Kindle with the Scribe feature. Having templates in the notebook feature is really nice too. But these are like some talking points and uh, you can see I used a cool template here to talk about shots and uh, different talking points for those kind of shots. The lasso tool as well, I think they could fix the aspect of when you kind of take something and lasso it, you can move it, but you can't invert it or flip it upside down. No. Nope. Yeah, it doesn't invert, huh? Does not invert. That's Ma a cool I mirror wonder, feature. I wonder if there's a way to do it that's different, um, but doesn't seem like it, right? No. It would, it would be more straightforward, I right? I think so. I think you would know. That's something remarkable. I don't know when they added that, but I learned about it recently, and that's a really cool feature on there. It saves a lot of time if you're mirroring something. It can be a little large for a book sometimes when you're traveling. So I do often prefer my Kobo when I'm traveling because it's so small. I think there is an opportunity for them to make a smaller one that's like 7.8 or 8 inches, um, something that's just a little more portable. For the screen, I'd also like to have the ability to change the wallpaper. It's weird that you can't do that, and it's always these Amazon Kindle scribe like backdrops. In terms of the actual design of it, it's not bad looking, but if you look at something like the Remarkable, it is just a lot sleeker because they kind of implemented a design trick here where they made this outer bezel the same color as the paper. So most people don't even realize that's not part of the paper, but they have a much, like it's not even, see? It just has this little slim thing and it is a little slimmer as well. So it's a definitely a nicer, more premium feeling and looking device. Remarkable 2 is the second generation. I think in their second generation of this, they could improve the design a little more. But from a construction standpoint, very solid, very good feeling. From a competition standpoint, I think there are three other big competitors to this. There's the Super Note and the Remarkable which are more of a note-taking experience. And I mentioned the Super Notes adding a drawing feature, so that's gonna be really cool. This kind of lies in the middle ground between the other product, which is the Books Air 3C or the Tab Ultra C Pro. Those are Android devices, and so those have access to the Google Play Store, so you could download like the Amazon Kindle app on that. You could use Google Word Docs, you could use Google Excel like stuff, so you could actually even watch video on those, which is kind of crazy. Um, and they have color screens. So if you're looking at this solely from like a productivity workhorse perspective, you can also hook up keyboards to those. I think those make a little more sense, but if you're kind of dedicated to the more distraction-free approach between like a Remarkable or a Super Note and something like the Onyx, then the Kindle Scribe really fits that middle niche, I think. And that being said, also you like to read. like. If you don't like to read, I don't think the Kindle makes a ton of sense. If you do like having the option to read as well with the front light, then this is kind of that middle ground, I think. I will link some of the other people I've collabed with, Kit, Brandon. They have really good kind of comparisons of all these devices, so I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. The Remarkable, I do have the type folio, so if I slide it out, it becomes more of a typewriter style function. 
So that's pretty cool. Really distraction-free way of typing, kind of like a typewriter, something like the free write, but you have the ability to also mark up on here at the same time, which is cool. If you want to see my long-term review on the Remarkable or the Typefolio, I will also link that for you to check out. The last thing I'll just talk about is battery life. And these, all these e-ink devices, that's one of the benefits is A, like the visibility, the reduced eye strain, but it is also the battery. These things have incredible battery life. They last three, four weeks at a time. If you're using it like really heavy every day, then you might get like two weeks, but still you're never gonna be like looking for your charger. As Olivia, my friend said, for the battery life, like do you charge it every week, every two weeks or? Less, and I use it every day. I don't think it's even died on me once yet. I probably charge it like once a month. Okay. Maybe every three weeks. It's good. If you're really going heavy on the brightness on the screen too, it might diminish a little bit, but it's not gonna be a crazy amount. The beauty of e-ink is once things are on the screen, they're kind of there, and it's only using power when you're changing. But the backlight is a constant draw of power, so it will take a little more battery. Having the ability to use the Kindle app on your phone or on Mac or Windows is actually really nice too. And allows for just a nice sync of all your notes. So even if you forget your Kindle, you can uh, use that and just access everything nicely. Personally, I take all my notes on the Remarkable. I have taken notes here and there on this. I've made sure to take notes you know, for this because I wanted to see some of the updates they've done. And uh, the Remarkable has been in my workflow for so long. Like I had the Remarkable one before that, bought it day one, then got the Remarkable two. So I've been using that for like over five years and it, all my notes are already just there. But this is, like I said, really that good compromise of uh, something in between a Remarkable and something like a full functional tablet or the books tablets that are Android based and have color and can integrate with anything in the Google Play Store. You can even use those as a second monitor to your laptop, which is pretty cool. Hopefully this breakdown of how the Kindle has changed over the past year and how it is kind of intended to be used gave you some clarity there. If uh, you do want to see my talk with Olivia, I'll post it up here, but it's uh, basically us talking about the remarkable experience, the scribe experience, specifically her scribe experience versus mine. And so uh, check that out if you want to see it. Thanks for watching.